guys, my name is Serena Poon and welcome to my show, Serena Lives. As a celebrity chef, nutritionist, and entrepreneur, I'm incredibly passionate about helping others live their best life through methods I call culinary alchemy, which is the magic of combining education, integrative and functional nutrition with healing intuitive energy. So, with each episode, I'm going to share with you the inspiring stories of some amazing people, incredible entrepreneurs from all different backgrounds, all who have overcome challenges in their personal journeys to get to where they are today. And today, I have the very special opportunity to share space and to share with you a true sister of service and the healer of healers. As a master intuitive, her life has been divinely and profoundly guided through several near-death experiences, actually true-death experiences, a deep coma, intense trauma, and the unconditional love and alignment that has led her on a journey of service. As a law enforcement officer, as a clinical social worker, a mentor, a healer, a coach, a teacher, and now as the chosen guardian of the purest, most potent ceremonial cacao plant medicine in the world. With over 700 naturally occurring compounds and exceptionally high levels of antioxidants, this sacred Guatemalan cacao, which is protected by Mayan priestesses, actually has the most nutrient-rich plant-based nutrition in the world, on the planet. There's so much more magic I want to share about it. Please welcome the founder of the powerful Legacy Cacao, Michelle Sine. Thank you so much for Thank coming you. today. You're so wonderful, and I really appreciate you coming. I know you guys have been literally all over the state, all over the world, bringing this cacao to life. It's my pleasure. So there's so much in your story that is incredible that I can't sum up in a 30 second intro. I know that there are some things that are, you know, painful and challenging, but at the same time has enlightened your journey to where you are now. Can you just share some of those, some of those moments with us so we have an understanding of what's brought you to Legacy Cacao? Yeah, absolutely. The intuitiveness is generational on both sides of my family, mm -hmm. and I actually resisted it. You know, as a child and in my early life, I really resisted it. I didn't understand what practical use is it. Mm -hmm. You know, often I would share intuition as a child and people wouldn't listen. And then I had a few really serious injuries, mm -hmm. one that led me to a coma, I died several times, and then a second one that led me to being in the hospital for a year and a half. Right. And it was through that process that the brain was taken out of the picture. Literally, I had brain injuries, mm -hmm. and so the brain no longer could run my life. Mm -hmm. I had to surrender to my soul. Mm -hmm. um, do you feel comfortable sharing what happened? And if, and if not, you know, we don't have oh. to dive into that, but I just feel like you're a living, breathing example of, of what we can do. And, and what you came from is so intense and extreme. I mean, it gives so much insight and inspiration to what the soul knows. Right? Mm -hmm. And it's there, you know, that soul wisdom is there in each and every one of us. So I'm, Yes, please. I'm happy to share anything that can be of assistance to anyone else mm -hmm. because I did it in a messy, hard way because mm -hmm. I couldn't even pretend that I didn't hear. Mm -hmm. I heard directly and I wasn't listening. Mm -hmm. But you can just choose to be in alignment with your soul. You can just choose to live your purpose mm -hmm. and to not doubt that. So with me, the first time, um, the one that led to a coma, I was 14 and I had a horse injury and I literally cracked my head from above my ear all the way across the top. Wow. And so died several times, um, was in a coma for a month. And in that process, they had told my mom to unplug me that if I, if I ever woke up, I'd be a vegetable, completely non-functioning. And my mom knew that wasn't the truth. Right. And 
I'm so glad and grateful she listened. Mm -hmm. And then the prognosis, even when I woke up, I woke up, I was blind for a period of time. Wow. And I truly believe that that allowed me to transition back into the body. Mm -hmm. There's so much stimulation here mm -hmm. that I think after being in a coma and really being on the other side and, and being counseled and loved from the other side, that kind of allowed a slower transition back into the body mm -hmm. but my mom always believed in me mm -hmm. knew that the doctor's prognosis was just based on what they knew mm -hmm. right they're just doing their best at their educated guess but especially at that time they knew so little about head injury right and then the second head injury i was actually working creating behavior behavioral programs for children mm -hmm. and the the goal at the time was to be a family court judge to help children. Oh, okay. So I had collected experiences as law enforcement, probation detention, mm -hmm. psych hospitals, anywhere a child would be put in, th in the system or through the system. And I was attacked by a patient. And that time I had a head injury all the way around my brain that caused me to be in the hospital a year and a half. And I literally had to learn how to sit without tipping over, how to walk, how to read. And I was just about to leave for law school when this happened. So I, I was greatly identified with my intellect at that point, my ego. I had never actually experienced anything that I couldn't accomplish. Mm -hmm. And so ironically, I remember in my prayers and meditation that morning asking, okay, I'm, you know, I'm about to leave for law school pursue the legal field. Is there anything else I need to know for these children? This is the morning of the The morning the of the injury. And the last thing I really needed to understand was being the patient. Wow. Because with the first injury, I was in the hospital, then I was released. Because at that point, they didn't really know anything about head injury. So they, you know, once you're walking and talking, they just kind of send you on your way. But you came out and you lost your sight for a little bit though, right? I was still in the hospital through that whole process. By oh, the time okay. I left the hospital, my vision was back. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it was the second time that I really understood what it was like to be on the other side, mm -hmm. being evaluated, being told what you can and can't do. Right. And it was so valuable. Wow. So we, you took these experiences and you turned it into wisdom and you turned it into love and you turned it into part of your journey. And, and in this incredible life that you've had doing so much more than we can sum up in the short time that we have together, you, you were led to this legacy cacao and do you think that what you had experienced during this sort of, I guess, I don't know if beginning is the right word to say, part of your journey with, in a sense, losing sight while you're still in the hospital, but gaining sight from the other side, mm -hmm. right? And then not quite losing perspective, but not having a perspective for those that you would treat and care, and then gaining that perspective, right, as a patient. Yeah. So how would you say that you know, the, this, these parts of your journey that seem unrelated to bringing this cacao, you know, from, from these priestesses, from this sacred place in Guatemala, how does, how does that actually lead you to, to this place with the cacao? Oh, that's a good question. It seems so unrelated. But it's always related, right? <laughs> But it's always related. Mm -hmm. And it really comes down to there was a point where I decided to give, surrender my entire life, my being, mm -hmm. to being of service, to being in alignment with source, with the universe, to really get out of the way and stop trying to wrestle for control and be that instrument. Mm -hmm. And so I lived my life in such a way that I mean, even this morning, mm -hmm. I said yes, mm -hmm. and I'm so excited to be here with you, mm -hmm. and yet I still checked in, is it in the highest and best for all? Right. And so I do that with everything, and with cacao, it found me. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I, I heard so clearly when I was on the other side, mm -hmm. you know, they really sat me down and said, you're gonna go back, you're gonna do this, you're gonna do this. Part of that was, 
part of my destiny was about sharing indigenous wisdom, helping that reemerge, mm -hmm. and then the plants and the way that the plants were really going to come in right. and essentially save human consciousness. Mm -hmm. And so I always had that in the back of my mind. And then this beautiful cacao, I was asked by the priestess, they've never let this be brought anywhere mm -hmm. before now because their legend was that, you know, they've been protecting it, protecting it because their legend was that one day a foreigner would come to bring it when human consciousness was ready. So this is the original grandmother lineage wow. way back thousands of years ago when the Mayans first domesticated cacao mm -hmm. and... So yeah. this has never left the village basically? The priestess herself mm -hmm. has taken it out, but they've never trusted someone to bring it to the world. They actually have been, had many, many offers mm -hmm. from big industry to come in because mm -hmm. it, you know, our labs, I'm also a science nerd, and mm -hmm. the labs on this are off the charts. Off the charts. Yeah. Off the charts. But I mean, I feel it when I drink it. Especially when you follow the directions and it's, it's this exact same recipe, you know, as the Mayans have used for thousands of years. Mm -hmm. I feel it when I drink this and especially when we do it as recommended on an empty stomach. It's powerful. I mean, you can feel the energy of the plant medicine moving through your body, which I think is incredible. And there's something that you've been kind of talking about. And for you, it's 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 it feels so natural and it's at home but I think for some of our listeners when you say you kind of drop into yourself mm -hmm. you know and that you're this you've been you've had intuitives on both sides you know can you describe what it is that you're doing because we've talked about manifestation and intuition and kind mm -hmm. of connecting with yourself and I've actually done a little exercise on one of my episodes to try and teach people how they can connect with themselves and listen to their higher self right. and get the answer how do you do it and what is it what is there something that you can share so that someone who isn't practiced who doesn't quite connect it can you know the most important thing is i'm not any different than anyone right. anyone watching the show right ever you know grateful to people who've dedicated their lives to being gurus and shamans mm -hmm. but also each of us are that individually yes and no one has greater access to our power and our wisdom than we do right. so whenever the brain says how because mm -hmm. the soul never asks that mm -hmm. so whenever the brain says how I always respond to that with I don't need to know how my soul knows I bring myself to willingness mm -hmm. so for me I commit all day every day to the willingness of being an open channel and the plants, you know, your beautiful products, things that are of integrity absolutely will support your biochemistry, your nervous system, your cellular health, mm -hmm. your body to be clear so that your soul is no longer a whisper and the brain is loud so that the soul is the loud voice that you hear. So just breaths, quiet, willingness to hear and then trusting yourself trusting that voice that you trusting that voice and you know it's it's like with singing if you try to hit a note and you miss it then you adjust mm -hmm. so it's the same thing open your channel but don't be afraid to be wrong or that your brain is making it up mm -hmm. ask listen you'll adjust mm -hmm. and pretty soon you won't go to anyone as your source you will be the source in your community. You will be the invitation. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. And I think that's something that, you know, what you said, that we are all, everyone's the same. We all have the we same ability to tap this. in. And I think that that's something that people need to be reminded of, especially from someone who has the kind of background that you have and who has come on the type of journey that you've come on and where you have been guided by your own inner voice, right? Mm -hmm. And your own intuition. And so I think it's important for people to hear that. And I think it's also important for people to hear a little bit more about Legacy Cacao. 
So yeah. tell us more because I saved most of the magic for you to share about this incredible product and what, what you're doing with it and why. Thank you. The first time I held a cup, mm -hmm. I'm so sensitive that I can feel if anything that's going in my body is alive, was the chef angry when they made it? Mm -hmm. I mean, everything. And yeah. really, all of us are waking up to that. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, why the integrity of a company is so important. Mm -hmm. Not just the nutritionals. Right. Especially if it's going in your body. And the first time I held a cup of this, I just started crying. Wow. Mm -hmm. Because the energy of it was so intense. And it, literally, from seed to sip, it's done in total ceremony and intentionality. So the women are trained what they're holding in their mind mm -hmm. the entire time they're on the land, the entire time they're touching it. There's only one Mayan priestess with the original recipe. Wow. And then when she, it's time for her to transition, she will pass that down. To one priestess. To, to the next priestess. Mm -hmm. And this is so energetically sensitive that it really can't be put through machinery without it impacting it. Mm -hmm. So the way that we grind it is the stone carvers who've been the carvers forever. They go to the river, they do ceremony, they ask permission for the stones, they hand carve those stones. So that's what actually grinds the cacao. Wow. And then it's done according to the Mayan calendar. Mm -hmm. And they don't, um, I don't tell them when we need cacao, they tell me when we're gonna have it because it ha they pray, when is it time to harvest? When is it time to make it? Wow. And then special, you know, according to the Mayan calendar, very special energetic intentions are put into it, mm -hmm. each batch. So on a foodie level, it's delicious, it's it decadent, is. but no refined sugar, only four ingredients in it. And on an energetic level, every single aspect of it is done in ceremony. That's beautiful. And, and you have, you created a fair, um, a fair trade program? Actually, with this, it, it's, yes, it's an invitation to what I think is truly the purest cacao on the planet. Mm -hmm. And that alone is such a blessing. But this plant came to me, I'm really the trustee. Mm -hmm. It's not mine, the the Mayan Kiche people. Mm -hmm. it, none of this is mine. They trusted me with it to bring it to the world. And this is an impact initiative. So it's right. not just letting the world know about these plants, mm -hmm. but it's also letting the world know the way we do business with indigenous yeah. has to change. Mm -hmm. And the way we handle a product that's going into someone's body mm -hmm. has to change. And so with this, we created fair trade wasn't enough for this situation. Mm -hmm. We actually created fair profit. I love that. Let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah. So what is fair profit for these communities? So fair po profit came from meditation. And it, you know, often people have asked me because we don't, we don't take any income from this. This is really a passion project. The blessing is the plant itself. There's right. not a lot on the planet. No, there's a limited supply. There's a very limited supply. We're not talking about scaling. Some things you scale, some things you protect. Right. And this is one of those products. So people will ask me, why aren't you doing this as a nonprofit? Mm -hmm. But for this plant, mm -hmm. it was not a respectful model because we're not doing them the favor. Right. They're doing us the favor. They have protected this with their lives. Right. So Fair Profit was created saying that when somebody, you know, in this country, when you're the best at what you do, mm -hmm. you expect to be paid in that way. Sure. Same thing for them. Mm -hmm. They have protected the best in the world. The majority of the profits go to them, mm -hmm. to the women, as it should be. Mm -hmm. So they can continue this tradition in this culture that they've had for thousands of years, right? That's amazing and it's beautiful and I'm so grateful that you've come to, to share this and I had such an incredible experience the first time that you introduced this to me 
and every single time that I've had it because I'm one of the lucky ones that I can make this in my kitchen um, with the recipe that you've included. So I'm really grateful that you came to share this story. It's so important. Um, and to share your story because I think that that is so important for people who have come across times in their lives that they feel are challenging. Mm. And to know that it's truly within themselves that they can overcome whatever challenge that they're faced with. And sometimes it's helpful to hear stories from other people who have challenges that mm. seem even even more so and to see where they've come from that. And that not only have you come from that and, and thrived, but that you've taken that energy and you're using it to give back in a whole, in an even bigger way for the conscious collective. Thank so yeah. for that, I thank you very much. Thank you. Um, and I'd love for you to share with everyone where they can find more information about Legacy Cacao and about you. Um, the social handles are? Yeah, you can actually go on the website, legacycacao.com. And there you're able to purchase it. Again, it's limited supply. So when it's there, it's there. <laughs> and that's to protect the farming and the land and the people and the practices. Um, also, when you go there, each bag that's purchased, another bag is donated. And we did that to, because of limited supply, we did that to make sure this plant is available to all people. And so those bags are donated to young entrepreneurs, artists, impactful people in the world. And social is at Legacy Cacao. And that's perfect. So is there, can we, if I had someone that I think would be inspired by this, can I send in their name when I purchase a bag and have a bag gifted to them? Yes, so the way it works is when you purchase a bag, you're absolutely able to nominate. Um, and highly recommend it because once you're a part of this, you're a part of our family, you're a part of our community and we're all linked. So everyone has been connecting together and, and engaging in impact in initiatives around the world as we're fueled by this plant. So you can nominate. We really love to have those nominations from our community and send those blessings to fuel the bodies of those who are in alignment in that yes and ready to be of service. So you get a chance to be a part of the Legacy Cacao family. You are here, a part of the Serena Loves TV family. We thank you so much for joining us today. And you can binge watch all the episodes <laughs> at serenalovestv.com and on the EverTalk app on Apple TV and Roku. So thanks so much and we'll see you guys next time.